Hey everyone, uh, my name's Nick, I'm the CTO Particle, and I was putting a quick video together called Tachyon Does Sense Data. Um, and I, despite the <laughs> grammatical challenges with the request, um, what a boring topic. I think um, everybody who's listened to this uh, video probably understands that a 10 cent microcontroller could read sense data, and it's not the most exciting thing to do. Yet, I am somebody for malicious compliance at times, so I thought I would give you a quick sneak peek into that, but maybe do it in a way that shows what I'm excited about, about the Tachyon product. Um, let me just start with the board we're looking at in the background here um, is a negative of the bottom of the Tachyon board, um, and you can kind of see the metal shield where all the, the active electronics, the Qualcomm chipset, um, the RF front ends and things are underneath it, the flash and the DDR. Um, and really the top side of it is a lot less populated, um, predominantly to keep all of the RF in check. There's 5G radio on it with some really high frequency, high power signals going on. Um, so it kind of looks a little unusual from a single board computer, but it also allows us to have the antenna on the other side out of interference from all of the active electronics. Um, and that allows us to have an integrated cellular and Wi-Fi antenna, which I think are really key aspects to this. Anyway, that wasn't what it was exciting me about. Um, I was going to show you a sneak peek behind the scenes about what the development process looks like and how we kind of got here. Um, so I'll wind backwards. Um, if I jump to this, I'm sitting outside, um, just in my parents in the UK at the moment. And I have attached um, to my laptop a webcam. It says, hello, everyone. Um, and that webcam, um, I can show you the Tachyon board. Oh, is that for it's gone to sleep? Because, of course, I waited just long enough for it to, to go to sleep before I started recording this. And now I've got to enter my password again. There we go. Okay, we're back. So what you've got here is a development board. Um, the background is that this chipset... Um, from Qualcomm was originally um, in slightly different form inside cell phones, you know, around the 2021 era. In fact, it's still in phones today that are sold. Um, it's extremely high powered, very, very adaptable. Um, this is a development board that we've been using. We have another development board. I can probably just jump to, this is a picture from our team who um, gave me an update this morning. Um, another kind of breakout board. This one is powered by a battery. Um, and it's driving the uh, at the USB hub through its own built-in 5-volt charge so that you can go and just plug it into a display anywhere and connect to your mouse and keyboard, et cetera, et cetera. Nice, juicy battery inside of this one. Um, what we've got here is um, this board, and I've hacked in, whether you can see this, a Pimeroni fat stack. Um, I think uh, the display, oh, you can even read it in this sunlight. It's great. Yutaki on uh, Fat Stack from Pimeroni, um, who's just up the road um, in Sheffield. A uh, big shout to the Sheffield Massive. Um, huge fan of all their stuff. I think I own probably one of every one of their boards. Um, uh, this is interestingly hacked into this board because by default, the I.O. of the cell phone processor um, originally was 1v8 um, because that's you know keeping the power low. So we have a bunch of buffers in the design. And this one, this one took a fairly large amount of aggressive hacking and just the British beautiful countryside um, where I am. Um, if I switch to, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Let me to record that. No, fail. I don't want to, although maybe I do want to record me quick to, it always goes right in the night, right? If we switch to the Algata, there we go. Um, I've got um, an Algato box, which is in line. Ah, you know, I'm somebody who would want to see what it was. Uh, Elgato box, which is a 4K. Um, this is connected to this USB-C hub, which is connected to the board. HDMI out goes into here, and then this goes out into the display over there. So it's just kind of sitting in the middle of it, and that allows me to go and um, take a look at the content on the screen so that you can see it without um, the sunlight getting in the way, because it is astonishingly hot today in England, one of those rare days. Um, and they've got a mouse and a keyboard attached to it. Um, it's got two displays on it. I don't know whether you saw the other display. It's currently running Firefox. Um, I'm wondering whether I can drag my... Oh, I don't know. Does this work? Oh, I just selected Firefox. Uh, I can probably drag it over if I was to be a smart, but I can't see my mouse cursor on the screen. So we're not even going to go ahead and do that. It's a great demo, this, isn't it? Great demo. Really off script. Um, what I will do is um, show you... This is the Ubuntu desktop. It's in minimal version. Um, it doesn't have the launcher installed and things like that. 
Um, I thought we would wait for um, a later version of video from Eric, who has got our actual prototype board um, running with the full Ubuntu desktop with all the accoutrements, the fancy launchers and everything. This is just kind of in basic mode. Actually, the um, the video the, because this uses Wayland as a desktop um, and uh, renderer. Oh, where's my mouse? Because oh, I'm trying to use the wrong mouse here. This actually, I think you can see using Western um, as the basic UI, um, so that there's different kind of um, available options. We're um, going to stick with the Ubuntu desktop by default. Um, let me see. I installed this super basic terminal app on here. Um, I, why is there settings up here? Go. Wi-Fi is working. Great. Um, okay, now I have to go and pull this keyboard up. Ah, what a glamorous world this silly sense of demo is. Um, uh, am I? I'm just going to troll everybody by using Python too. Um, and I'm Python. What's the app going to be called? Sensor. Here we go. This actually did take more effort than it looks. Um, you can see it's a wonderful 24 Celsius right now. This is really from the Enviro Plus hat from Pamaroni. Um, okay. One of the other bits was showing the here we go, temperatures getting slightly warmer. Oh no, we're back to 24. Um, I'm better go and open the windows in this house, otherwise things house can melt down tonight. Um, you can also update the display on this one as well, which just works via S good C. Um, but it's basic. That is the most dumbest sensor demo that I could put together. Um, I'm trying to use Control C on my keyboard. We've got a, a great tool that allows you to do use and share your Mac keyboard with the Ubuntu desktop and just kind of drag your mouse over to it. But it's not installed at the moment, um, which is driving me mad. So I've got separate keyboards and mice. Um, let me see. Was there anything else to add on top of this? Um, no, I think we're really excited by it. I think. Uh, the power behind this processor, kind of eight cores, you know, 2.7 gigahertz is pretty impressive. Um, I think if you were astonished to find that it was reading sensor data at that, wait until you see the toggling of the LED. It's insane. Um, we'll show another video later, um, a lot more showing the um, kind of the MPU, the 12 tops MPU inside it running, maybe some of the um, some of the object detection demos we've done with some of the cameras running. Um, they're much more interesting and show the power of the system. But for now, I'll clock off. Bye for now.